Welcome back to Flat Hats at Home, bringing a little bit of Redwood National and State Park to you and your home. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things in our park, but a lot of people don't even know that we have it. Let's patch over to Ranger Rachel. Thanks Ranger Alley. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm an interpretive ranger at Redwood National and State Parks, and I'm currently working from my backyard. Redwood National and State Parks has so much more than redwoods. Besides big trees, this park also contains one of the largest, most mysterious, and least explored ecosystems on Earth. Not only is this ecosystem huge, it's critically important to the entire world because it produces more than half of the oxygen we breathe and a ton of the food we eat. Are you stumped yet? I'm talking about the ocean. The ocean remains so mysterious because it's so difficult to explore, but luckily, we can explore a little bit of the ocean right where it meets the land, tide pools. Tide pools are one of the best places to experience a unique ecosystem hands-on. A tide pool is exactly what it sounds like, a pool of seawater that forms when the tide goes out. While these pools can be very small, they can be packed with a huge diversity of living things. The tide changes every six hours, and with each change comes a new challenge to overcome. Life can be tough in a tide pool, and all the creatures that live in them have special ways of overcoming these challenges. As the tide goes out, areas that were covered with water become exposed to air. Some animals, like mussels, simply close their shells as they are uncovered and hunker down until the tide comes back in so they can reopen and feed. Anemones, like this giant green anemone, curl their tentacles up tight to keep from drying out and expose sticky parts of their bodies that can collect pieces of shells that make a natural sunblock. Animals that can move, like sea stars, can either slowly move into deeper water to remain wet, or some, like this ochre star, can take water into their bodies to help remain cool when exposed to the sun. Drying out isn't the only thing tide pool animals need to worry about when the water recedes. A low tide also means that predators like shorebirds can freely roam the rocks looking for any exposed animals, sending shore crabs and other creatures skittering for the safety of a rock to hide under. Life doesn't get much easier when the tide comes back in. Tide pool inhabitants must now contend with battering waves that can easily remove anything without a tight grip. Barnacles stay tightly secured to their rocks by making a fast curing natural cement that they use to glue themselves down and sea stars hold tight with thousands of tiny tube feet on their undersides. High tide makes finding food harder for predators that hang out on land but the deeper water now allows ocean predators like larger fish and even seals a chance to swim into tide pool areas for a snack. High tide isn't all bad for the animals that call tide pools home because the rising water also washes tiny plants and animals called plankton into the tide pools. Plankton is a favorite food for many of the tide pool inhabitants and when the tide goes back out, these plankton are trapped and make an easy meal. Life in a tide pool is challenging for the creatures that live there and is always changing. The vast ocean that makes life so unpredictable for them can also be very unforgiving to us. So if you decide to go out tide pooling, remember to be safe. Always go at low tide and know when the tides will come back in. Watch out for slippery rocks and keep an eye out for large ocean waves that can appear without warning. Leave all animals where you find them and don't pry anyone off rocks. Doing so can hurt sensitive animals. Back to you, Ranger Alley. Thank you, Ranger Rachel. Folks, if you haven't visited a tide pool before, I would highly suggest it. I am originally from the Midwest and I visited my first tide pool just over a year ago. And now it is my favorite thing to do, just going to explore all of those cool ocean environments and ecosystems. So write that on your bucket list, put it on your to-do list, and next time you're close to an ocean, go try to find a rocky area and a tide pool. You will not be disappointed. Next week, I have the honor to bring to you not only one, but two national parks. We're gonna be talking with the ranger over at Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park to bring to you their big, their red, and their very old, the giant sequoia trees. We're gonna be diving into the differences between these very large red trees, the redwood and the sequoia. You're not gonna to wanna to miss next week. It's gonna be really fun. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Flat Hats at Home, bringing a little bit of Redwood National and State Park from our home to yours. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like or maybe even give us a share. 
Redwood National and State Parks is committed to bringing as much of our park to your home as we can during this unprecedented time. So please stay healthy and stay safe.